Hello and welcome to BW London podcast. So I'm going to be looking at Andrew Tate and this ritual, just like when he was banned recently, that was also a ritual and now we have his arrest, which is also a ritual. So I'm just going to look at a few videos here and share them with you all. I'm also going to put a link to the other videos I've got with Kevin Samuels, who I believe was a sacrifice to put Andrew Tate on this global platform. I have the public consciousness. Andrew Tate has been a hot topic, not just on social media, but within the simulacrum. He speaks of the Matrix a lot. Well, the Matrix, the simulacrum, is a copy of a copy. In reality, TV is the ideal image for you to imitate. Interesting that his name is Tate, because he was on these reality TV shows, even Big Brother. Big Brother is the all-seeing eye, 1984 reality show where the cameras are watching you. Him and his brother have been in multiple reality TV shows, and this is how they rose into power within the simulacrum. Reality TV, like Keeping Up with the Kardashians, this is the Matrix. This is the simulacrum. And what we have today is mematic warfare. This has been studied by militaries. So we're going to get into the hidden agenda being rolled out with mematic warfare and the occult connections to secret societies. Andrew Tate was recently banned on the information highways, which was part of his three-step plan. The three steps is symbolic to the first three stages of initiation in Freemasonry. He also calls himself the Top G, which is the G on the square and compass. He also poses with the Illuminati hand signs and is mixed up with mafias, religions, politics, and allegations of human trafficking. He speaks about this matrix, right? The matrix we live in is the simulacrum where we see the billboards for us to imitate. And he plays in perfectly with what our culture worships which is power, the number one drive for all narcissistic personality disorders. The world has become so narcissistic, especially in the West. The muscles have nothing to do with being healthy. It's all what leads you to more power. He speaks a lot of truth to the social engineered soy boy resonate with him because they have been lied to their whole lives. The powers that be understand psychology so deep and are a century ahead. They are century chess moves ahead. His father was a master chess player, and the Illuminati plan is rolled out via centuries using the culture. His dad was also connected to the military industrial complex, like many other social media influencers, sports stars, and celebrities. But this plays a deeper role in the divide and conquer strategy, not just left versus right, but the biggest divide and conquer will be man versus woman. Censorship is bad. They give us these fighters, right? You got Jake Paul, a fighter, who's playing the good guy with his Illuminati tattoo funded by the Disney Corporation. And then you got Tate, the bad guy, going after each other. Him being banned is going to promote him even more. Just like when Alex Jones was banned, he actually sold more products and became richer. And the elites know this because if they didn't want him around, they would simply just shadow ban him and ignore him. Mematic warfare, we see Elon Musk, who became one of the most powerful, richest person during the lockdowns, 600% rise in wealth while everyone had to shut down their business. He always posts memes because there's an AI algorithm that tells them which memes through the haptech technology will rise them up to power even more. These memes are actual sigils that are being charged on such a high level. Everybody has a cell phone today and is looking at their phones and looking at sigils of memes and charging the power of these sigils. And what this could be leading to is a swing to the ultra right which would lead to witch burnings with no checks and balances as the whole paradigm of left and right is an illusion and everybody is being played. But him being banned is going to make him more popular as it was part of the three-step process. Andrew Tate was a hot topic lately, not only on social media, but also within the simulacrum. 
Well, The Matrix or Simulacrum is a simulation and TV shows or reality stores play those ideal images for us to impersonate. As you know, Andrew Tate was on multiple reality shows. As an example, Big Brother, The All-Seeing Eye. The series takes its name from the character in the George Orwell's novel, 1984. Tate and his brother have been in multiple TV reality shows, and that's how they rose into power within the simulacrum. Like an example, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, or Bachelor. So Andrew Tate was banned on information highways, which was part of his three-step plan. This is stage one of a three-step plan. So I'm going to be viral for a little bit longer, then step two begins. The conquest is continuing. So this is just the beginning. The, like a lot of the three-step plan is symbolic to the three stages of initiation in Freemasonry. He also calls himself the top G and poses with Freemasonry signs. Here's a picture. Look at how I'm doing the power symbol. Symbol of I'm power. The, I'm the Illuminati. Freemason. Secret control in the world. I am secret control. Also He's also mixed up in politics, the mafia, and even allegations of human trafficking. So he talks about the Matrix, where we see these billboards for us to imitate, while he plays perfectly in his role with what our culture worships. The world has become so narcissistic that muscles have nothing to do with being healthy. Having a lot of women or men is seen as an accomplishment. Financial freedom is so on demand that people fall into pyramid schemes. And being a rebel is a healthy sign of brain function, so his vulgar and extreme opinions make him popular and even more after getting banned. As an example, Alex Jones sold more of, of his products after getting banned, or cigarettes or parental advisor stickers. So why do so many people fall into his scheme? It's because they've been lied to their whole lives, and he's talking about it. I also agree with some things he says, like as an example the lockdowns and Covid situation. But you see, where was he while we were speaking up against these things? While we were protesting and losing our rights? Where was he while people would have needed it the most? See, the psychological powers behind this are way deeper than you could imagine. He isn't speaking up for the people, he's speaking up for the agenda. Else he would get shadow banned, not censored and interviewed. His dad was also connected to the military industrial complex. Like many other influencers or celebrities. There was literally a spy for the CIA. And they used to do insane things that you wouldn't believe. This whole thing plays a deeper role into the whole divide and conquer strategy. But it's not only left against right anymore. It's also women against men. The whole paradigm of left versus right or men versus women is an illusion and everybody gets played. What are the statistical odds of repeated references to people? multiple advertisement campaigns for one particular brand. Basically, completely impossible. This is very, very purposeful, and they've done it because they're trying to give you hints and trying to normalize and show you and tell you what they do. They're doing this because of karmic retribution. Satanists believe if they tell you what they're doing, if they make their intentions clear and you still adhere to them, that they are no longer responsible for the negative consequences of them. That is karmic retribution. I'll give an example. If I have a stall of poisoned apples and I put up a sign that says apples and you buy one, I've poisoned you. But if I have a stall of poisoned apples and I put up a sign that says poisoned apples and you buy one, now you've committed suicide. I have not poisoned you, you have committed suicide. If you know what I am doing, if you know what I am selling and you still comply and adhere, you are basically saying that all the consequences are erased. That's how karmic retribution works in the satanic world. It is evident Andrew Tate, as I said, is taking you further into the Matrix. Andrew Tate's just getting you to play the same game as the enemy, which means he is the enemy. So Andrew Tate's method is to play the same game as the enemy. That method will never work and never get you out of the Matrix. He's just defrauding you, defrauding people, taking their money. Andrew Tate's motive is money and gain and defrauding people he just addresses money and uh you know sleeping with women and uh that's that's just going further into the matrix so he's a complete fraud at, on every level and um plays the exact game of his en enemies or his supposed enemies 
which shows you he is the enemy and he likes you to think that he's some sort of Sun Tzu figure in the art of war but nothing could be further from the truth he's a he's an absolute rookie at what he does people have blind blindly followed and been blindsided by the complete BS he talks um, he's definitely no warlord and definitely no peacemaker or peace bringer I made a post on Instagram four days ago and I posed the question because I noticed something about Andrew Tate. I said, Andrew Tate's birthday has been changed from December 14th to the 1st, but why? Right? And this was four days ago. And somebody even said in the comments, shout out to Marley Creations, he said, they making adjustments for upcoming rituals. He called it, right? upcoming rituals and what do you know now here we are talking about andrew tate you could have clearly seen these are the pictures that's coming from the post that i made on instagram where i showed the change of his birthday because even if you went on safari and put andrew tate birthday december 14th showed up even on multiple articles other articles december 14th 1986 was his birthday so why now on Wiki and Famous Birthdays, two, two publications that you can't change, that's a common misconception. It's not like how it was when we was in school where you could just randomly change somebody's Wikipedia page. You can't do that no more. Go on Andrew Tate Wikipedia page right now and try to edit it. You can't do it. So don't try to use the, oh, it must have been a random person playing around. No. He even got a new damn birthplace. But they do this for a reason. This is very strategic. Now, what also interested me was the fact that they said Andrew Tate and then they put arrested in quotation marks. It's almost as if they're being sarcastic with you right in front of you. Andrew Tate arrested in Romania. They're telling you they put this stuff right in front of your face. Once again, that new birthday is all for a reason, man. Y'all better watch that movie Starry Eyes, man, when she come up off the ground after she went through her rebirth ritual and they gave her a present and said, happy birthday. This is your new birthday. It's all surrounded around these people's birthdays. And they sitting here, they sitting here putting it right in front of you. Look at him. What's the odds of him just happening to flash that symbol right when they get ready to take a picture? He's not doing no damn yoga right now. He's getting arrested. He's not meditating right now. They walking him to the damn station. You can't use that yoga shit forever. You can't use that excuse forever. He even said last night, this was, this was before he got arrested. He tweeted to some lady, talking about, bitch, I got 33 cars. Bitch, he trying to stun on her. You feel me? I got 33 cars. I'm doing my thing. Why he couldn't just say 30? I got over 30 cars. But no, here they are speaking in code with you. Here they are speaking in code with you. And here, and here he is. Here he is. Giving you the symbolism. He even got the tattoo of the serpent going around his arm. Come on, man. Y'all niggas, y'all niggas pussy gets so wet when y'all hear grown man speak. Y'all don't even see the truth that they putting right in front of you. Y'all niggas ain't no different than some hoes to some damn pimps. Man, come on, man. Now, order out of chaos is the 33rd degree Masonic slogan. So yes, these folks moving up. They moving up in the ranks. They about to, they about to get high up in the ranks and they about to be able to fake their death. Yeah, you move up high enough, you get to fake your death. You don't, really, you don't get to die. You don't, you don't have to die. You move up high enough, you don't have to die. You can, you can just fake it. Well, come on. Here's footage of Andrew Tate being recently detained in Romania. And as you can see here, as he notices the camera being pointed on him, he holds up a hand gesture. What is this hand gesture? Obviously it means something and it was intentional. So if you know. You can find a picture of my father and he's sitting there with a hand symbol. He looks his fingers and he, he puts his, his thumb in his hand together. 
I do the same thing and I do it in a lot of my Instagram pictures. So I start doing it and people start saying, that's an Illuminati hand symbol. He's a Freemason hand symbol, hand symbol. I'm not associated with the Illuminati or Freemasons. The reason I do it is because when your brain is advanced as mine, you have to complete the circuit. I'm full of electricity. My blood's on fire. By completing the circuit, try it at home. Try this right now. Try the hand symbol. Complete the circuit of your body. Make the electrons flow. And I do it because it increases my power. It's like a power. So what is interesting about those videos is just like Kevin Samuels, he clearly has been up and coming in the back, in the back side of things for many, many years, as was Kevin. So these guys are never just put on, they never just turn up. There's one, there's two things about them. One is that they've always, they've got a long history in the industry already and they're just waiting to move up in ranks and they hope to get further, if not killed before. And the other thing is that their fathers, if not their father's fathers, are always linked, are always, their, their position is not by coincidence. It's not just, oh, da da, here we are. No, they've got a backstory and a history based on their family. It was the same with um, Jeffrey Zama. His dad was linked to the government and so on. So his career in crime was no accident. Same with these brothers, Tate and his brother, same with Kevin Samuels and most of the people that we see put on. They come from a long history of this. Now, with Kevin Samuels, I definitely know that his sacrifice was to do with this whole red pill environment. People like Abra and Preach, Fresh and Fit, the lead attorney, Just Purdy Things, who's rising up. They are all linked to this one sacrifice. And I'm sure there's way more things that I don't even know. But the point of this red pill, pill environment is to divide the sexes. The, the aim of dividing the sexes ultimately is to remove the sexes, to promote the Baphomet. They're trying to create this non-sexless society where there is no man, there is no woman, so it's a mix between the two. And obviously that's just pure evil and it, and it all is to just promote division and to separate mankind. Now these things are prophecy and they're moving forward and these plans have been made centuries ago, centuries ago. Andrew Tate is literally doing hidden in plain sight. That's why he's always talking about the Matrix and stuff like that. They've made it, he makes it so blatant and there really is a community of people that really believe that, oh my God, Andrew Tate, he's got so popular. They want to take him out, blah, blah, blah. You don't get popular without being a part of them, period. Same with Kanye. He's out here talking. And like, oh, he's talking truth. He doesn't get to talk that truth unless they permit him to talk these truths. Listen, when the lockdown happened, there was a series of riots going on in England. And I, it was online, it was on Twitter. And I was like, oh my God, wow, look at the West End, it's filled. In less than an hour, it was gone off Twitter to the point where I, had, I was gaslighting myself. I was like, maybe I didn't actually see it. When I say it was physically unable to actually find it, like this is how powerful their options are in terms of what is put out there and these riots continue through the whole of lockdown and they were massive thousands of people i saw them on the very few people that i knew that actually attended i got to see it on their personal social media but as terms of it going out to the masses it was non-existent if they don't want to put something on it's not going to be on period so right now andrew tate is apparent and available because they've made it that way Banning him made him more popular. This arrest is all premeditated. Even people who don't believe in any kind of conspiracy theories recognise that this was staged. They can just see it in the way the media was positioned, all of it. But the colours, the colours, that, that was, there's one thing I knew. I was like, well, as soon as I go and watch this arrest, I'm going to see black, white, red and possibly blue. I'm going to see these colours. It is the theme. It is literally the Masonic Freemason theme. And he's wearing a blue hoodie. And that blue hoodie apparently represents the good, in quotations, magic within their witchcraft stuff. The colour scheme is there. As for the hand gestures, I can't even be bothered. The fact that he's able to speak that away and people believe it, yet he's doing the same gestures from old, of old that have always been connected to Masonic, um, Masonic beliefs and Freemasonry and witchcraft and so on. They've always existed, but he's been able to actually gaslight the public and to say, no, I just do it for yoga and meditative tests. Stop. Please, stop. So if you look at the color scheme in the background of the video, I'm talking about this specific video. 
of the black and the white in here. That so in magic, talking about with the K, so M A G I C K. In that world, what it is called is the coming together of opposites. We've seen this in magazine covers, movie covers, music co like album covers, different things like that. Like red and blue is the most is the one I actually see the most of, uh, but I do see it with this of black and white being that black and white are the representations of magic, just like red and blue are. Red is a connection to black, which means satanic or evil magic, and white is blue, which is good light magic. Okay, so that's what this means, which indicates to me watching this video that this is a ritual spell. Him being removed from all sources of media that's mainstream, this is a ritual that is being played out for us. What else I'm seeing here is that he is wearing a black shirt, or it looks like a black sweater. I think it's a black sweater. So with that, he is telling you what kind of warlock he is. And by what he's wearing of black, he is telling you that he is a worshiper of Saturn. As you can see in Andrew Tate's final message here, that he is doing a specific hand sign. Also a hand sign I'm sure you guys have seen Trump do during sit-down interviews, uh, politicians, world leaders, different people throughout history since we've had the photograph making this diamond hand signal. And so uh, what I'm gonna be doing is going over that further on in the video, but pay close attention to this in the color scheme. As you can see in this picture on the left, I believe she is the prime minister of Germany, I believe. Uh, I don't remember what her name is. Angela Merkel, I believe. Also, uh, on the right side of the picture, you see Adolf Hitler doing the same hand sign. We're talking, this goes all the way back to the founding of this country and even before that to the Knights Templar. Okay, so this is what I mean by when I say a played out ritual for everyone. Uh, Saturnius, which, mean, which is basically taken from because Saturn, Jupiter, it's uh, referred to in the Roman Empire, um, basically it's another name for Satan. So he's a Satan worshiper. Um, how I know that he is these things is also the hand gesture that he's doing in the video of the, he's doing the diamond. So what that means is that, so in order for him to get to where he's at in prominence, popularity, to get these things, you have to sign what is called a blood covenant. And this is stuff that's behind the scenes. Um, it is a Freemason ritual. I don't have that much more to say on this topic, purely because it's, it's, it really is in plain sight what is happening. But for those of us that are conscious and do know what's going on, I mean... It's not even about preaching it to others because I don't believe in that. I, I, I believe in just living a certain way and if people see and take note, then so be it. But there's no point in preaching at people. There really isn't. Um, but what I would say is it's, it's just so easy to be fooled because between Kevin Samuels, um, Andrew Tate, even just Purdy things and all of that, it's not like they're not talking sense. So it's really easy to be dragged into what they're saying. Kevin Samuels, in my opinion, was just to get specifically black people on board because he catered to black black women, those are who he spoke with and so on. So once that market was um, sucked in, you have Andrew Tate, who is global. He's for all people of all nationalities, of all races. You know, he, he resonates with all. So he brings a message, especially for the many incels that are out there. We've never had more men that are not um that are 
virgins past the age of 30, not sleeping with women, angry men. You've never had more women. This, these are the first two generations of women that from the working society built up out of feminism. These are the first women to make their own money, to be way more fussy about relationships to the point where they've out, they've literally out relationship themselves. They get past a certain age, they haven't had children, they haven't connected with anyone, never had a more liberal society of women just giving it up, giving up their sexuality every and everywhere. But they didn't. we didn't see the outcome. Obviously, the government and stuff plan way ahead. They know the outcome. They know that this was going to be the first women that were never going to be so lonely, going to be without marriage, going to be without children. This is the first generation of this. They already predicted this. And now is, this is a beautiful time to divide us because you've got lonely, bitter women and you've got angry men who are not able to pass on their legacy, are not getting women in any way, shape or form. So it's already divided. And then you throw these these um, bombs in the middle, the Kevin Samuels, the Fresh and Fix, the Just Purdy things to continually divide us tell men not to get married, women are just blah, blah, blah. It's just perfect timing and so pre-planned and that's what we're seeing right now. That's literally what we're seeing played out. So it's also about within hearing these messages that do make sense and they resonate because their messages resonate with me. But I have to never lose sight of the fact that there's an agenda here. I, I, I'm guilty for watching these programmes. I watch them because I, I find them very interesting. Um, the debates that they have between the men and women and so on. It's very interesting. But there's an agenda and it's not a good one. Andrew Tate is speaking what many men have felt for a long time, the way that women should respect their men because women have never been more disrespectful towards men, especially since we've been able to do our own thing and so on. And that we don't need to rely on men. It has changed society. From time that it became that you needed two incomes to create a household. And that especially in England, um, most men move in with women because women are given through the government, social housing and so on. So the respect levels are off. Women have no, women throwing out men all the time and so on. Women do not need to depend on men the way they used to. The government is their actual man. They created it that way. All of that was part of the vision. When I used to listen to Kevin Samuels, he basically was making out like black women chose to throw away their men and rely on the government as their man. How can, so of all the races of women, just black women chose to do that? Or was there an agenda to make them do that? Was there an agenda to make the government their men so that they didn't respect their men and now we have what we've got here now and how we can divide society? You know, that's one thing that you'll notice in the manosphere and red pill environment. They will speak about these things as if people made these decisions for themselves, as if this is not an agenda. It's an agenda. And these guys who are running the agenda, all they care about is money and power and doing what they've been told to do, what they've been destined to do. We've got to stay on top of it mentally because what seems, so, so many things can seem right in this environment that are just an agenda. But yeah, just to conclude, this was a ritual. This was clearly another stage of his illumination, um, Andrew Tate, and whatever stage him and his brother are going towards next. He's never been more popular. One of the most most searched people on the Google engine this year. Like things are moving forward for these guys in the corrupt in the corrupt side of things. We've got to stay on top of it, and we've got to keep our mental correct. And I think for me, for 2023, I'm going to stop consuming so much of their content. Because even though as much as I know, I think the pleasure I get out of it is just a little bit too much. Too much enjoyment and listening and, you know, kind of dabbling into what they're saying. And you, 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 we're a lot more easily influenced than we realise. You can, you can know what you know, but what we consume is what we become. And I don't want to become part of this divided society. I've felt a lot of sadness in the last year about things. Um, I've even felt sadness about being successful in the work that I do and so on. And where has that left me in terms of men and blah, blah, blah. But that's playing into it. It's playing into what they want me to play into. And that is that divisive way of thinking. This is, this is part of what they're creating and I won't be taken in. 
and anybody listening, please stay on top of your mentality as well. Don't let them get you. Anyhow, thank you so much for listening. So I was out I was last night and I got a message on Instagram from some guy I used to know for a long time, et cetera, et cetera. He goes, hey, let's have a cigar. I said, okay, cool, let's have a cigar. We went, we met, we had a cigar. And he said, hey, man, I just want to show you some videos. And he showed me some videos of him with some very famous people. I won't say their names, some famous people. And he said, bro, you need to be careful. I was like, what? He goes, when I was hanging around with these people, I won't tell the story of how he knows them, blah, blah, blah. He was saying they had to sell their soul to a degree to get that level of influence. These are like some of those famous people. Yeah. And he's saying that the people who are in charge of controlling the narrative don't like people who have a huge, huge influence who they don't control to some degree. And the internet's changed that, but still people who have a massive influence over populations and society, they want to control one way or another and you need to be very careful. And I was like, I kind of knew all this. All right, all right, yeah. dude, don't worry about it. He goes, no, but you've blown up big. Don't worry about it. And I was like, all right, cool. And then about four hours after this conversation, maybe about 2 a.m. last night, I got a message on my WhatsApp saying, hey, my name is XX. I'm friend of this guy. This is where I got your number. We want to invite you to a private party. There's a private island we want to invite you to. And Not a private party. island, bro. We can't be doing these islands no more. It man. can't be an Epstein island, bro. We can't, we can't uh, be if we that. find out you're uh, up to... I'm telling you now on the podcast to show up when I'm not fucking doing it. But if I get uh, smoked, you know why. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, and they yeah. were just like, look, it's, it, it, you know, there's 500 people, 400 girls, 100 guys. It's private. It's invite only. It's in July. Blah, blah. And I was like, this is weird. And, and, and then I'm thinking, well, maybe yeah, I do have quite a lot of influence, et cetera. Maybe people would like some leverage over me. Maybe they would like, you know, a, ho a video of me in a hotel room with, even if it's just chicks, even if it's just something normal, but they get the video and they fucking flip it. And, there, there are things that come with fame that start making you be careful, especially with me as well, because I'm a, seen as a bad guy. I'm a bad man, right? I could tell you names you wouldn't believe it. The most famous people on the planet have DM'd me saying, hey, come to my party. I'm like, no. Fuck wow. Me. I'm staying away from all of it. Right, because I want to try and stay outside the matrix. I think there's a level to the matrix. Once you get caught in, you're you're fucked again. So I'm saying this on Spotify. So I would never kill myself. Firstly, there it is. And yeah. secondly, it's kind of scary. It's kind of scary, man. So like, there's there's a lot going on in the world.